First things first, Corey, how are you? Good. Yeah. Hanging out. Okay. <laughs> what I want to start with is, do you remember the first album you ever bought? Uh, um, it's definitely, I know it was a Guns N' Roses album because okay. that was like the first like five CDs I bought. Guns N' Roses. How come Guns N' Roses? That was the first band I got into or heard about. Uh, my parents owned a CD of them. And I just kind of one day listened to it and I, I dug it. So I was like my my gateway band that got me into rock music was was them. So that was the only band I knew about for a while. Um, so all I bought you know the whole Guns N' Roses catalog before I you know kind of okay. stumbled upon some other bands. So what was it about their music that that captivated you? I don't know. It was just uh, you know. Being young, you always hear your, you know, the music that your either parents or mm -hmm. siblings play, and all the stuff they listen to didn't really, I guess, trigger any kind of uh, interest at, you know, at that particular age. You know, they were listening to like my sister had like Mariah Carey, and you know, my parents were listening to like, I don't know, like Jimmy Buffett or some okay. shit. So, uh, yeah, just music wasn't really ever something that was. An interest, you know, at that age until I heard that music, you know, guitars mm -hmm. and stuff, and you know, I, you know, wanted to play guitar, you know, shortly after getting into rock metal type mm -hmm. music. So uh, that was probably kind of one of the things that was appealing to it was, uh, you know, loud guitars and solos sure. and stuff. <laughs> and then any tracks or, or uh, maybe whole albums in particular that that you kind of couldn't stop playing. Um, well, you know, the Guns N' Roses stuff was pretty much, you know, I listened to all that stuff and, mm -hmm. you know, I was at that, that ripe age when uh, Terminator 2 came okay. out, so You Could Be Mine was always a, a okay. song that I really, really enjoyed off that, that record. Mm -hmm. um, then after that, you know, I, you know the, the Guns N' Roses connection, uh, you know, I, you know, started, you know, hearing stuff about Metallica mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, got into Metallica and that's when really... The interest to play music and play guitar was, mm -hmm. you know, kicked up because uh, the style of guitar playing that Metallica did was definitely more of what I was, or when I heard it, was definitely more like appealing than okay. the more blues-based kind of rock and roll Guns N' Roses style. So mm -hmm. um, the more riff-based, you know, metallic Faster. crunch. Um, so once it was like, you know, Metallica, Megadeth, Slayer, okay. um, Iron Maiden was another one that I was super into. Guitar wise, starting off. So, um, just pretty much like, you know, growing up with those bands, you kind of, you know, mm -hmm. you always have like Master of Puppets, Rain of sure. Blood, Rust in Peace. Um, we're all, you know, big, big records for, for me for mm -hmm. learning how to play guitar and uh, just you know, learning about how, I guess, songs are put together mm -hmm. and stuff like that. So, uh, definitely all, all those classic records were, okay. you know, huge and. Iron Maiden was a was a massive influence for writing, you know, like melodic, uh, like guitar harmony stuff mm -hmm. that they're kings of. So sure. uh, yeah, definitely that was all the, I guess, influential. You know, when you're kind of figuring out, you know, what you want to be as a player and right. kind of learning how uh, learning their songs to kind of eventually develop into hopefully being able to write, you know, songs. Half decent. <laughs> well, that's interesting because going through all these these classic uh, albums and, and and tracks, uh, what did you notice about your own playing? What you wanted to play? What what um, what sort of say did you get out of uh, playing the guitar? Um, I spent a lot of time just learning how to play the songs, and uh, and then just playing along to the CDs, you know, on my my stereo, and then you do the whole bedroom, like you know want to be rock star sure. vibe um, and one of the key things I did from uh, or learned that you know I, I guess uh, benefited me later on was uh, you know definitely playing playing along to Metallica and Megadeth songs and then trying to do the vocals mm -hmm. that uh, you know now you know singing and playing is you know very easy and natural okay. or was not even when I first joined the band both Matt and I sang and played guitar and mm -hmm. did vocals. I don't really sing, so I guess you just call them vocals. Um, but that was all, you know, kind of developed from, mm -hmm. you know, just learning and, and playing along to bands, you know, like Metallica Megadeth, especially because they had 
guitar player slash singer, so the music and vocals are definitely very connected. Sure. And, uh, you know, it's kind of a little, you know, some other bands are a little harder because the vocals aren't, you know, you don't have to think about the vocals, you know, being able to sing and play it. So definitely those bands that did that were, were key for, uh, you know, future uh, sure. band stuff. And, and once you just play, play along the songs and just know how to follow, you know, song structures and which part's this and which part's that, you kind of just naturally just hearing how, you know, playing along and hearing how mm -hmm. the songs are, how they flow and, and kind of like learning about, you know, even like the basic, like what a, a simple song structure is, mm -hmm. let alone, you know, like a Master right. of Puppets eight minute long, <laughs> sure. you know, epic. You know, you just kind of slowly along the way, kind of see how, how it's done and you kind of mm -hmm. pick up on the tricks and, and different things. And even nowadays, you know, still listen to like, you know, records and stuff and hear an interesting twist in a song structure and kind of, you kind of remember that and you're like, right. hopefully someday you can kind of uh, write something that you can kind of utilize ideas like that where you can kind of not follow like a cookie cutter, mm -hmm. you know, formula. You know, a lot of those bands back then had... You know, they definitely uh, kind of took the a song structure and uh, really took some twists and turns mm -hmm. with it, which makes those records a lot of fun to listen to. So did you start writing riffs then at an early age as well? Yeah. Um, even when I first I got my first guitar and amp and uh, hadn't even taken a lesson or learned how to play anything or knew what the hell I was doing, I didn't know how to play play anything. So like I just wanted to play guitar, so it was pretty much like, just making a bunch of noise, trying to make something that sounded like music. Right. So, um, uh, so the first, you know, the first thing I played was just trying to make something up because I didn't really have anything else to play. Okay. Um, but shortly after, you know, taking some lessons and kind of learning how to, you know, have some kind of, um, I guess, skill mm -hmm. with uh, being able to just play chords and stuff like that. Uh, I know I, I definitely. Wanting to start my own band or, or jam with other people, that that would happen very early on, and uh, you know, definitely was a mix of playing covers and then also wanting to try to write my own songs. Mm -hmm. um, so I can't remember the first song I wrote, but obviously it's probably terrible. Um, <laughs> But for, for instance, if, if we go into the well, trivia, uh, trivia obviously uh, came along, and then because you you're, uh, last year you re-released Ember to Inferno, so on that record, how do you look at that record from now now, and based on on how well, that record, I have to look at as a fan perspective since I didn't, mm -hmm. I didn't play on it, but uh, when I first uh, I guess joined the band or, or auditioned for the band. It was like a week after they finished recording it, so mm -hmm. there was, you know, uh, to learn the songs from it, you know, Matt gave me like a CDR because okay. there was no actual discs yet of it. So I got to hear it before it came out, and, uh, you know, I always liked the record a lot because it's, you know, not far off because I had the, you know, the blue demo, which a lot of the songs from Ember are on. Mm -hmm. So uh, I had that prior to that, so um, that was the whole reason why I, I hit Matt up to try out was because, okay. you know, what they played and, and, and what I was into playing was, you know, definitely we were on the same page as far as right. uh, musical interest in, in Sonics with what kind of music they wanted to play. So um, it was a very uh, easy, natural fit because, you know, we definitely were into the same stuff musically and guitar wise. So it made it very easy for us to, uh, I guess, uh, I guess blend together or, or really uh, mesh well. Like it didn't mm -hmm. take long to just naturally play well together, right? And write. And and did, did you do the same uh, thing that that you that you what you mentioned with Iron Maiden tracks? Did did you kind of delve into the song structures of of that album and kind of see how that album came together and and yeah, mo yeah moving I, um, forward? It's you know analyzing song structures and stuff. You know. You know, Maiden, you know, they have very short to the point songs and they mm -hmm. have like on the same record, you have a run to the hills, which is like three and a half minutes, very, very easy s structured song. And then you have Holly Be The Name, which is a lot more, you know, it's longer and more drawn out and there's more mm -hmm. parts. So it's, uh, you know, for me, it's just, you know, I've heard those songs enough. It's, it's very easy to, you know, kind of understand what's going on and, and everything.
No, but I, I mean for, for Ember to Inferno, did, did you analyze them in the same way that you analyzed uh, music by Iron Maiden? And no, it's just, it's just you kind of just listen to it okay. and you just kind of know how the song goes eventually. Okay. You know, I heard, you know, some of the songs, you know, prior from the demo, so I was already familiar with them and sure. nothing changed on the, the album version except the, the, the tempos were different. Um, but other songs that I hadn't heard before that I need to learn how to play, it was, you know, doesn't, you know, I think that everyone in the band, you know, has a pretty, uh, pretty good memory with memorizing riffs and songs okay. that, you know, you can show, you know, anyone in the band, you can show someone, like, if you wrote a riff, you can show someone the riff, like, and then, you know, we'll be able to walk into a room okay. and somebody like, all right, here's a song idea and show everyone, show everyone the riffs and then we can, you know, pretty much just get up and play it. Mm -hmm. So everyone's got a good uh, musical memory for, uh, okay. I guess, uh, soaking up, you know, ideas right. and everything. And that's, you know, same thing with listening to those records. You, you hear something enough, it's just kind of like implanted in your brain. Like a muscle memory. Yeah, yeah. Thing. And so, so do you remember your first show with Trivium? Yeah, we played uh, the Hard Rock Live in Orlando. Okay. For some, it was like a local. Right. Bunch of local bands, like a, I think it was like a free entry type thing with a bunch of local bands, and that was uh, that was my first show. It was like 2003. Okay. So that was fun. It was a big crowd, and uh, yeah, it was uh, we, it was right after. It was like maybe like maybe about like a month after I joined the band was my first show. Okay. And then, well, we, we kind of have to. Uh, Fast forward a little bit through the the albums, but was there maybe a particular one where where you felt uh, you kind of nailed the nailed what you were doing the riffs and then? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I think it's it's pretty. I guess uh, if you take everyone in the band, I think it's pretty much across the board. It would be. Uh, I think we definitely for records from start to finish. I thought mm -hmm. a sentence in Waves and Shogun were probably the, from okay. start to finish, or like, I think we nailed those okay. spot on. And then the other records, I think, you know, are really good. Um, I think, uh, I, like, Silence and So I thought was really good. I, there's, it, there's, like, each record, like, there's great songs, and, or, or, like, the records are good, but there's always, like, you kind of look back and you're like, there's, right. like, something, something that, like, wasn't quite done to your liking, or, there was something missing mm -hmm. in the sound that you thought maybe, maybe at the time you were like, oh, this is gonna be really good. And then you look back and like, well, I think we probably could have done a little more of this and it would have given the record a little more oomph or sure. something. But uh, I you know, definitely like all the records, there's just, you know, obviously like more than, sure. others more than, you know, some of the other ones based on like, you know, I guess your perspective looking back right. on kind of what you, Kind of, you kind of step away from it, and you have like a different perspective when you're like, mm -hmm. I guess in the in the fight with making the record, and you're being, you know, trying to, I guess, get all this work done, and mm -hmm. so much going on that once you get away from it, you can you have a different, uh, sure. you can just kind of look look back on it with, uh, I guess, a different perspective than when you're actually, you know, kind of in the studio trying to right. put it all together. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to make you pinpoint what what you didn't like about certain, but. Um in, the, in that sense, when you uh, are, are each, is each album is is that very much a snapshot then of, of a certain period of of just that time? Yeah, I think that's what uh, you know. If you just organically write music, mm -hmm. and you know, definitely being in a band and doing it, you you obviously can see other bands' catalog and understand mm -hmm. like you know when there's so many fans that you know will say something to a band and they're like you should do this record part two and it's like 20 years later and it's like you don't understand like writing music it's you know the, your I guess your circumstances like what's going on in your life at that point in time has a lot to a lot to do with your creative output because right. you know it's very emotional with what you're you know trying to put out and and, and you know show people and uh you know, definitely when you're making a record when you're 19, then when you're 30, there's obviously, your life has changed and is different, mm -hmm. so obviously you're gonna creatively do something different right. than, than that. So, 
Um, it's, you know, we just always have, you know, done each record is kind of like that moment in time. It's like, what do we feel like playing? Mm -hmm. What's inspiring us? And you just kind of do that. And each record's reflective of that era, you know. Mm -hmm. If you're having, you know, girlfriend problems, right. that'll, that'll, you know, if you have a bad breakup, that's obviously gonna, sure. you know, have some kind of effect on, you know, if you're really upset and pissed off, you might write something, mm -hmm. you know, if, if you're mad, you're gonna write something pissed off, and if you're sad, you might write something very depressing and, <laughs> right. and, and whatever, so um, it's all, it's all just kind of that moment in time, and you can appreciate the record because you're like, you know, that's just something that very naturally happened mm -hmm. when you were at that moment in time. And then you just hopefully, whenever you make a new record, that moment in time will be something that'll, you know, produce some kind of magic or uh, some sure. kind of great record that years beyond, you know, after you make it, people will be like, yeah, that was a, you know, one of my favorite records you ever did or something like that. So we always just try to, you know, just kind of just let it, let it, let it come out and not right. force it. And that's because that's, Pretty much how all the all the records before it were made is just kind of just what the best material at that moment mm -hmm. that kind of presents itself. Sure. You just kinda of run with it and then hopefully everyone else will dig it when you put it out.